Let me edit this. It's gonna be double S tier, okay? And we'll have triple S tier as well. And then we'll have F tier. So you have your S tier, and you have S tier, and then you have S tier. Those tabs, don't worry about the tabs, chat. Chat, you're looking at the wrong stuff, okay? Don't worry about the tabs. The tabs are irrelevant. They're all relevant, actually. That's why they're open. They are all relevant, okay? We have Jenny's stream up. Okay, we have dad jokes, it's important. We have... Every morning I get hit by the same bike. It's a vicious cycle. All right, so today we're gonna be taking a look at all of these new weapons, including some of the weapons from 2.6. You can see the Haran that I'm, I'm moving around on screen right now. We're gonna be taking these weapons and we're gonna be ranking them from triple S tier all the way down to F tier. All right, let's take a, let's take a look. Okay, so we have, we need, to set, we need to set the baseline, right? So the baseline is going to be, we have Mist Splitter, triple S tier weapon. Uh, it's just so good. It's just the best sword in the game. Uh, up there, up there in the running with Jade Cutter. So these two weapons are both very good. I would say Miss Splitter leans towards being the better weapon, uh, but Jade Cutter is very good for the crit value it provides. I'm not going to be rating them by different refinements. These are all R1. Wolf's Gravestone, I'm going to put it in, for now, I might move this around later. I'm going to put Wolf's Gravestone in S tier. I'm going to put Unforged up there with it. Unforged, maybe a pain in the ass to get the passive up on, but it's still really strong when you have it activated. Uh, Wolf's Gravestone is a little bit easier to use and more consistent, but Unforged is still pretty good and it's up there. Freedom Sworn double S. I'm, I'm gonna just explain this right now because a lot of people are gonna be really confused. It's literally Noblesse on a weapon for your entire team. And it's actually more than Noblesse. It shares more than just Noblesse buffs. And on top of that, it's an EM sword, which is just like, you know, it can be good on Jean and Sunfire. It can be good on Kazuha. But in general, it has your, your five-star stats as well. And it works on a lot of different characters. So overall, Freedom Sworn is actually pretty good. Controversial, Harbinger of Dawn, A tier. People go, Harbinger of Dawn has 100 uh, crit value. But but here's the thing. Here's the controversial part of it, is that you have to be above 90% HP. And since Hoyo has just been like pushing all these characters that deal damage to your entire team, even while off the field, this instantly becomes worse. I normally would have actually put this in S tier. Uh, but right now, I mean, it's just not the case. I'm gonna move it down one tier. Amanoma, I'm actually gonna put an S tier as well. I actually think that this sword is probably the best free-to-play sword now. In terms of the HP thing, I actually think Amanoma is just a, a better sword. Iron Sting just doesn't see a lot of uses. Like, you basically can only use it on Kazuha and, like, maybe Jean in Sunfire. But it doesn't provide you the same buffs that Freedom Sworn is and does, and that's why Freedom Sworn is so good. But I feel like this probably goes between C and B tier. I'm gonna put it in C tier to be safe. How would I rate Cinnabar? It's just only usable on, like, one character, right? For that one character, it's probably a tier but like as a weapon generally speaking i'm gonna put it in d tier see it's tough because i want to put skyward in s tier yeah i think i put skyward in s tier I, i'm surprised by how many people don't use skyward because of the er stat okay lovonia a tier great base attack but it, you use it on bennett for buff or you use it on on kaya for fizz and who uses kaya fizz sacrificial i'm gonna put an a tier it's good it's very good but uh Sinkchul is the only one that takes full advantage of sacrificial Maybe Kaya. Prototype Rencor, B tier. Dark Iron Sword, yeah, it, there's just better options. Black Sword, put that in A tier. This isn't Dark Iron. I call this Dark Iron. This is Dark Iron. Debate Club, true us. True. I didn't even think about that, guys. Debate Club. I'm just, I'm just kidding. So Harad, I'm, I'm, I'm conflicted on. Okay, so like Mist Splitter and Jade Cutter, you get a lot of value out of the passive, right? Haran, you get some value out of the passive because you're getting the elemental damage bonus, but the crit value is less and the attack is, you know, basically on par. Yeah, for overall use, I would put Haran lower. I would still put it in double S because it's a good stat stick though. And actually, you know, considering that, I move Wolf's Gravestone up to double S as well. Okay, we have the Flute. I want to put the flute in F tier just because of the competition it has, but I'll put it in C tier. Alley Flash is literally just Iron Sting, but worse. The thing is, okay, its passive is worse than Iron Sting, but its base attack is so high that like, if you don't have any other weapon, it can be fine, but it has an EM main stat too. That's the other thing. Like it has a passive that's like worse Iron Sting, but it also has an EM main stat. So at the same, like, it's really hard for me to argue that this is anything above C tier at all. I'll put it in B tier because it has higher base attack and you can use it uh, in a few more things that you can use uh, Iron Sting. The Bell, triple S tier. I don't even know, what, is, what the f*** does the PlayStation sword do? What does the, what does the sword of Sony do? Bro, what the f*** is this weapon? <laughs> 440 based. Sword of Sony sucks ass. Um, I'll actually put Lion's Roar up here. I think Lion's Roar is actually really good. Uh, this is actually double S weapon. Serpent Spine is just broken. Like, I do I need to say why? I'll, I'll say why? I'll say why for YouTube frogs. Crit rate main stat, all right? You don't have a lot of weapons with crit on them in the Claymore category. The passive of it gives you a ton of elemental damage bonus. Or not elemental damage bonus. It's just damage bonus. If I had to say like a percentage of damage bonus, it's a 
ton percent. It is literally so much damage bonus off of the one weapon. Now, you do lose the damage bonus if you take damage, but if you get hit by a shield, like if you have a shield on, it doesn't take away from your stacks and the stacks persist off the field. Rain Slasher, I actually want to give it some credit. It's actually one of Diluc's best in slot options at high, uh, at high level. And it's actually really good on Sayu. Uh, so since it, and you can also use it on Beto and Taser. So it's actually not too bad. This makes me, this tier makes me want to move Festering to A tier. Favonius, same problem as Sack Sword here. You just don't really use it for many characters. Snow Tombed. You use it on less people than Archaic. Archaic's actually good. Oh, you know what? Actually, Rain Slasher should definitely be down here. I shouldn't put Archaic in the same tier as Rain Slasher. Uh, actually, uh, you know, Archaic goes up here. Never mind. I changed my mind. If you ask me, chat, this is more pain than uh than pain slasher but we'll, we'll put this in a tier as well yeah actually you know what on second thought i think this probably goes in s tier the thing is because like skyward's up here because it has a decent passive but also because it has the er and the high base attack whereas this can actually just be used on most uh claymore units and be an okay sword black cliff good because it's a crit weapon putting it up here though so so here's here's my problem with pines okay Increases attack when normal or charged attacks hit opponents, right? For Eula, that's really great, but it takes a lot of time to switch characters and then switch to Pines. That's a big problem for me. It, it seems very like niche. It does have a really high base attack. So I am gonna put it in S tier. I don't think it's double S. I do think, so we we actually ran into a kill of Favonia pretty early on in the tier list, but after thinking about that a little bit, about how we uh, put this pines in s tier but we left akila down here i actually do think we can move akila favonia up the, the crit value oh, actually i might put this in double s good stat stick in general the defense people saying to use it for the defense are kind of coping but it, it's like unless you're on ito or noel uh ito noel shinyan but i don't know who shinyan is actually that was just a name that came to my mind for no reason kind of freudian slip i don't really understand what that was don't think about it too much just because it's less flexible than unforged i'm putting it in s uh this is same league as the flute here's okay here's how this is gonna go actually you know you know what's gonna happen here's how this is gonna go we're gonna we're gonna make a new tier we're gonna call it every catalyst except thrilling tales and we're gonna go up here we're gonna add a tier above and we're gonna call this thrilling tales oh my god why are there so many? Anyways, on to pull arms. Fav Lance is broken because there's no sack pull arm, and because every pull arm user since Inazuma released wants ER. So because of that, Fav Lance is actually really good, and all of them can be used in teams to battery other characters, right? So I'm actually gonna put Fav Lance in S tier. We have Fav Sword and Fav Lance up here, and then like as for the other Favonia stuff, it's lower, right? But specifically, Fav Sword and Fav Lance bring so much value. Okay, a lot of people shit on Deathmatch, but it's actually good. It's either an A or S. I'm gonna put in A for now. We might come back to it. Dragon's Bane, good on Hu Tao, good on Shang Ling. I'm gonna put in A tier because the people that can use it, use it really well. Lithic actually is okay because you could use this on Hu Tao uh, with Sing Cho, Zhang Li. It's between A and B tier for me. It's like, if I had to, if I was going to say where it's at, it's low A tier, but it's A tier. Yeah, I actually think Vortex Vanquisher is kind of a more niche weapon if you're just looking to get value out of its passive. But because of its stats alone, I do have to put it kind of high. I honestly feel like I'm just gonna put all of the, uh, all the summit lines up here. So the Dragon Spine Spear, Fizz damage bonus, right? And it gives you the extra damage uh, if, you, if they have Cryo on them. Here's the thing, Crescent Pike exists so dragon spine spear is not good jade spear i'm gonna put an s skyward spine put it in s put i'll put prototype star glitter here black cliff here star glitter actually i'm gonna put it down because uh because catch exists it's gonna make a lot of people mad white tassel i hate building white tassel because like you're probably gonna get a weapon you can replace white tassel with eventually i'm gonna put white tassel in b tier because it's not actually bad but i wouldn't recommend building it over something else staff of homa triple s tier engulfing lightning very good weapon often undersold actually i'm gonna put engulfing at double s a lot of people are under the impression that like because the catch exists like engulfing lightning is not a good weapon when engulfing lightning literally gives you so much attack bonus based off of er and then if you're using esf on that character you're basically double dipping into stat sharing and it's just incredible it is such a good weapon and it makes building like any character that requires energy so easy Wavebreaker is actually really good too. I, I would put Wavebreaker. The only reason I wouldn't put. 
No, actually, I'm going to put Waybreaker Ness. The thing is, there's a lot more characters that want to use something with elemental burst damage in the polearm category than there are in the claymore category. Yeah, I'll move Akamaru up to A. I, I do think I was a little rough on it, but I definitely still think that Wavebreak, or I still think that the fish is better. But thinking about it a little bit more, I'm going to move Akamaru up to A. I think that the fish is a little bit better, though. I'll put Calamity Queller just because stats, S tier as well. Oh, uh, this might go to double S, actually. I'm going to put an S tier for stats alone. If it snapshotted the double, if you used alt, then I would say at double S tier, but it, it doesn't. So you can, yeah, you can use it on server base attack, but I, I definitely feel like this bow just doesn't have a lot of use. It's either a B or C tier. I'm going to put it in B because I'm going to put Favonius in A tier. I'm also going to put Stringless. Oh, Stringless is either S or A tier. Stringless affects Child's Riptide, so use him as a nuke. He, he does a lot of damage with it too. You can use it on Fischl. You can use it on Venti. It's between A and S. I'm going to put Slingshot because I don't think it's... I don't necessarily think it's like broken, but I think it's pretty good. I'm going to put it in B tier for now. Um, and we'll see if we move it around later once we get the rest of the bows in. Ravenbow honestly could be a lot better for free to play like Amber Mains. It's pretty good, but I don't, I don't, I'm not a big fan. I'm going to put it in D tier. It's not F tier, but there's just other weapons that are better. Recurve bow. I'm going to, I know it's like okay on Diana, but I still don't, I, I don't recommend it. Uh, I'm going to put recurve actually in F tier. Okay. So here's, here's, here's the truth about Viridescent. Okay. So a lot of people seem to be under the impression that Viridescent Hunt is bad because of its like base attack and because its grouping utility isn't that good. But like there's so many characters that can make use of this, of the grouping utility, right? Especially because you could use the grouping utility and then switch. Like you can, you can proc the grouping utility and then like swap to a different character and it's actually pretty good. But specifically with Child, the reason that I like it more than Rust, even though Rust can technically deal like more damage under the right setup, um, is because you get that grouping with Child and he's in melee range, right? So he's really tearing it up. Um, so I feel like this is either A or S tier. I haven't decided yet. I'll put Rust in, in B tier. Beerus and Hunt, A tier. Skyward Harp, uh... S tier. I used to not think Polar Star was that great. I've changed my ways. Double S tier. Amos bow, S tier. Prototype Crescent, actually good bow. Uh, compound bow, I don't know who. Uh, Black Cliff, solid. Elegy. I'm gonna be honest, chat. Elegy's triple S tier to me. Messenger, D tier. Windbloom Ode, actually decent weapon. Um, I'm gonna put it in A tier actually too, for the EM bonus. It's Sorry, not EM bonus, it's attack bonus, right? Let me double check. Elemental skill receive this uh, attack increase. Yeah, I mean, it's it's okay. But actually, I think I might move this down to D, uh, B tier. Knock Waltz is very specific as well. Putting it in C tier, cause it's not bad, but it's not particularly crazy. Predator only works on PlayStation, F tier. Uh, Thundering Pulse. I'm gonna put Thundering Pulse in double S tier. It's just a good bow. I have a really, I have a really tough time. Hamayumi, B tier. I think we put this in B tier. All right, so like objectively, you have your Thrilling Tales, right? And then you have your every catalyst except for Thrilling Tales tier. If you guys wanna know my honest opinion, um, the, the biggest problem with catalysts is that there's a couple catalysts that are just god tier, and then there's just other ones that aren't. You have Widsith specifically, that's not Widsith. You have Widsith, right? Widsith would definitely be double S tier for me. Maybe even triple S tier. Because it's crit damage main stat, and the effect of it provides so much stat bonus, it's insane. Um, Congress Verity, probably S tier. Sacred Winds, S tier. Uh, this thing, S tier. This, honestly, Donut probably goes D tier. It, it, the only reason it's not F tier is because it's not completely useless. It's just, like, kind of useless. A lot of them are just sitting in S and A tier. Pull for the bell. Yes, pull for the bell, guys. Bell totally... Uh, this is sarcasm, by the way. Don't actually pull for the bell. It's actually not a good idea. Don't, don't do that. Just as, like, a, a general rule, general disclaimer, like, try not to take this, like, too seriously. Like, this is just... Uh, it's not like I planned for this video and spent months researching. This is just an off-the-top-of-my-head kind of thinking about where each weapon would rank tier list. It's not like the weapon bible, right? It's just my opinion on certain things, and, like, you're welcome to disagree with it. Uh, actually, you're not welcome to disagree with it. I, I take that back. Actually, this is the definitive tier list. If you disagree with me, uh, you're wrong. So that, that's it. Yep. If you guys have enjoyed, make sure to hit that subscribe button down below. Leave a comment if you think that any of these should be in a different tier. I need to think for a second, but I can cut this because I have editing. Give me a second. And consider leaving a like as well. It really helps me out. Anyways, guys, I will catch you guys later. See you on the... See you on the other side.
it's so hard to do this live. 